So good afternoon, everyone. For those that may not know me, my name is Sydney Furbush. I'm the manager of supplier diversity for Centennial Gas and Electric. I want to welcome back all our small business customers, our suppliers, special guests, panelists uh, to Centennial Gas and Electric's webinar series. This week, we're introducing a new series called Thriving in COVID-19 Beyond the Pandemic. Now that, now that many of the businesses are reopening and coming back, we want to share information on best practices, tips, lessons learned, and how to thrive within the new norm. At Sano Gas Electric, we understand that many businesses have faced different challenges. Our companies have pivoted during this time and expanded their service with the same customers. So to start the session off, I'd like to pass the mic on to Mr. Bruce Mayberry. He's our senior supplier diversity advisor at scg and &E. He's the facilitator, and today he is also the moderator of our panel. Thank you, Bruce. So, um, Bruce, if you could share with the attendees the logistics of our webinar series, some details about today's panel, and also introduce our panel guests. So you're up, Mr. Mayberry. Welcome all, and thank you for joining us today and thriving in COVID-19 technology and the power of social media. It's gonna be a fabulous webinar today. We have some experts here that's gonna get you up and going and doing great things for your business from a social standpoint. We want you to know that immediately after this webinar, you will be getting a survey. And so we ask that you fill out the survey and give us some feedback because that helps us do a better job to help you. We also wanna thank the other members of our team is uh, Linda uh, Depp, who is working uh, behind the scenes. We ask that you all keep your phones and computers on mute. If you would like to ask a question, please type it into the comment section. And when available, we will take those uh, questions from the comment section. So this is gonna be fun. It's gonna be interactive. So without further ado, let's get started and introduce our panelists for today. First off, we have Nicole. Nicole is a client service specialist, social media strategist, and a coffee enthusiast. For the last 10 years, she has worked in operations and process improvements with tech startup companies ranging from two to as many as 100 people. Welcome, Nicole. Great to have you today. Thanks, Bruce. Great to be here. I'm going to be talking um, about LinkedIn and what some of the best practices are for LinkedIn. And um, LinkedIn is literally the world's most largest professional network and it's all online. And so I will be speaking about the benefits of having a personal and a company page if you do have a small business. Thank you, Nicole. Thanks for being here today. Our next panelist is Elizabeth is a Director of Business Development for Morello Enterprises, Inc. Elizabeth is responsible for identifying, developing, and maintaining crucial relationships for the Morello Enterprises. Elizabeth also manages the business relationships with diverse suppliers and provides strategic direction to improve their diversity span within their companies. Elizabeth has leveraged social media applications to help Morello Enterprises communicate its construction offerings. Elizabeth, welcome to the webinar today. Thank you, Bruce. Hi to see, hi, I'm saying hi to all of you guys because I could see all the beautiful faces. Today I'm going to be discussing why Facebook is the largest platform for small businesses. And we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about content as well as why it's important to keep your activity going and why Facebook has many resources and tools that we could use today to help our small businesses. Thank you, Elizabeth, for being here today. And our third panelist is Erica. Erica is CEO and founder of Aviv, a certified woman and minority firm providing professional services to the gas and electric utility industry. Erica comes with over 15 years of experience working at Semper Energy Utilities, a 21 year military spouse. Erica connects deeply with the veteran community and has created a program called Impact Now to help and hire trans transitioning veterans and veteran spouses into the utility workforce. Erica is also married to an active duty Navy SEAL. Welcome, Nate, uh, Erica. 
Right. Well, thank you, Bruce Mayberry and SDG and E for the opportunity to serve you. And um, I really want to say that I'm coming today as a business owner and someone new to the business. So my really plan here is to help give you some tips and advice, some lessons learned that I've already learned very quickly uh, to really help you revitalize your website. Um, it is a very critical piece. It's the first thing that a lot of businesses and even your friends look at when you tell them you have a business. So if I can help give some insight and some really good tips that I recently went through, I'm happy to share and be a partner to you guys. So thanks. Well, great, thank you for being here. Let's start off with the desk definition of social media. What does social media mean? Social media is basically the technology, both via web and applications that allows all of us, um, everybody all around the world to quickly, efficiently, and in real time share various um, information. And that information could be anything from ideas, events, opinions, photos. It's everything from LinkedIn to Facebook, to Instagram, to blogging, to forums. Uh, it is very broad and encompasses all of that. So is it safe to say that we're all practicing social media right now yes it is wonderful well why does a comp why uh, is a company website important so the first thing when you look at a website it, it really defines your brand and what i tell people specifically business owners is you first got to ask yourself what is your brand and why is it important to share that brand in your website and i always like to share that with kind of a story of where i was and where i am today and the reason why COVID 19 has impacted the way your brand now is critical through the website um, I want everybody, if they have a chance here, to look at their phone right now and type in your business. When it comes up, the first thing you see, is it mobile friendly? Is it, are you allowed to be able to read thoroughly through? Are there cuts and titles? Do you have social media on there and it doesn't make sense? What I mean by that is, does your website have the tools you need to get to the next avenues of website um, applications? Wow. So a lot of us there have LinkedIn and Facebook as additional applications. And when you click on them, does it go into dead air or does it link up to an additional page to Facebook, to LinkedIn, to Instagram? If it doesn't do those things right now, your website is in need for a repair. <laughs> and that's why I wanted to share with you guys some tips because I was there. <laughs> and now I have the link set up so that anybody that goes to their cell phone now and types in your website can read it very efficiently and can click on the right tools to go to the next applications. So Erica, is it fair to say that your website is your business card in today's environment? Yes, it is your, it, it's your business card and it's a, it's a very fast way to connect with people that's in real time. It has your contact information. It also has what I've learned recently is an opportunity for you to engage in a two-way communication. A lot of websites now have tools where you can go in there and sign up for articles. You can hear about what's going on lately in your industry. You can post about activities. And so now it becomes this vessel of another way to just communicate relevant information of what your business is doing. Yes. Thank you. Why should I or any company be on LinkedIn? Think of LinkedIn as a Rolodex. It, you know, everybody and everything is online now. And this is especially even more true with COVID-19. So LinkedIn is the world's largest professional network and everything is online and you can connect and that means it's global. And this means that you can connect with people that you wouldn't have even been able to connect with 
in person. You, the, the, there's people that, that you know through other people that you may not have met otherwise at a networking event or in your own city through your own business. It's LinkedIn is about building networks and connections. Um, so it's not about, it's not just about who you know, but it's also who the people you know, who they know. So if I have a business, should I have a company page as well as a professional page on LinkedIn? Yes, um, it is important that your personal LinkedIn page, it is, think of it as like your resume. It is where you highlight your skills and abilities. It gets your company information. It is an up-to-date landing page. It is a profile. Um, so it's how you market yourself and your company page is how you are going to market your business and that's how you're going to grow your business so you should have both and you should have them connected thank you and can, how can i promote my small business on facebook that's a great question um bruce um, and I could talk about on a personal level. So as you know, I uh, work for Morello Enterprises and we um, own construction companies. And you might ask yourself, why is a construction company on Facebook? Well, I think it's some of the, the, the topics that the, the ladies had mentioned, it's about brand. And for us, it's about safety culture. So we wanna share that. Right? We want to know what our projects, what our construction companies are doing, and it all depends on your industry. So Facebook, as we know, is the largest and most important social media platform with over 2.7 billion, and, and you heard that right, billion followers in the world. Daily, you're looking at 1.3 billion you know, um, daily users. So this is why Facebook is definitely, definitely very important to all small businesses. And I think um, I talked about um, the increase in the customer and the engagement, especially right now with COVID-19, Facebook was a way to communicate. I mean, many people were feeling lonely and many people were not being able to reach with their clients. Um, so that's a way of communicating. Personally, me, I'm a big Facebook follower and I also follow a lot of my um, personal companies, news, restaurants, you know, doctors for many uses. So definitely Facebook is the way to go about it. Okay, so I've been in business for a while and I have a robust network. How do I connect my network to my website? I'll take that question and feel free to interject there with the other applications, but um, I really believe in feedback. You have to stay content. Your content has to be relevant. And especially with your website, I talked a little earlier about having that two-way communication. And sometimes people go, well, how do you have two-way when it's on a platform and you're sending it out just one way? And there is an opportunity and that's by soliciting feedback. Um, if you could have an opportunity there by using your current network today and putting it out there saying, hey, I have a website today, or I'm thinking about updating my website, take a look at it and give me some tips, give me some feedback. Now you're starting an engagement and a relationship back with your current network. And you'd be surprised the feedback that comes in. I have to admit here, we recently relaunched our website about uh, two weeks ago, and I sent out a random text to just my core network, and I said, I'm putting it out there. Let me know your thoughts. Um, and I can't believe what I found out. I found um, about five people come back with a paragraph of just errors that I overlooked, that other people overlooked. Um, in addition, what I think is pretty interesting I want to share is somebody came back to me and said, you know, you provide this service and we want to put you in touch with this other utility that's a big prime and maybe you could be a sub. So guess what happened? I got an opportunity, a contracting opportunity to be a sub on a real time contract proposal. And that doesn't happen by using your current network and going out there and seeking feedback and being open to the feedback. So I just wanna share that information and I wanna encourage um, business owners and not just business owners, businesses to adopt philosophies like that and be open to feedback and open to change. Fabulous, I would like to encourage all of our listeners, if you have a question to type it in the chat box. 
If you have a question, please type it in the chat box and we will get to it uh, if time permits. So my next question, can Facebook be used for marketing? Absolutely, it could be used for marketing. There is different ways to use Facebook. Um, recently, Facebook launched, uh, I don't know if you've heard about Facebook shops, and this is, it allows to set up to discover products and buy products. So that's just one. Um, another way you could market through Facebook is obviously through different um, engagement and stories. And this is where I go back on the content because it kind of relates on marketing and content. When you share your stories of what the companies are doing, they're gonna be able to connect. So you make a personal connection, but you also make a business connection. And I'll give you an example, restaurants. When, during COVID, many restaurants were open and many were not. So me personally, I looked at what activity they had, what promotions they had. So that was a great marketing for restaurants, especially during, and it all depends again on the industry that you have. If you wanna continue, again, going back to my um, personal business, it was very important for our safety construction companies to follow the protocols especially during the construction. So I was able to go out, take pictures. That way our, the, our clients were able to see that, you know, Morello Enterprises take safety very, very serious. So it's definitely used in different ways. And you can, you know, check on facebook.com, their business um, newsletter. It gives you many, many options and research, resource tools that you could use, especially for small businesses. Thank you. So we're talking about website, we're talking about LinkedIn, we're talking about Facebook. What's the difference between them? And do I need all three as a business? That That's a, if I could answer that, that's actually a very great question. So you need to start by putting a marketing strategy goal, right? So every, depending again on the industry. So you have to look at what's your targeted audience. So, um, because I know for Facebook specifically and why I've used it, it with my previous role and using it now, you could target your audience by gender, by um, age group, zip codes. I mean, it is so useful. So for me, it would have to be, my recommendation would be obviously put a marketing strategy plan and then identify where you're gonna get your followers, because again, we're talking about social media, not only with Facebook, but we have Twitter, we have Instagram, we have, um, you know, Pinterest. So it all depends on what your goal is and your objective, but I definitely recommend to, to do research and there is a lot of research out there. Thank you, Elizabeth. So here's our first question from one of our listeners. Oh, okay. Can Twitter be used for marketing purposes? I'd be happy to answer that. And almost every social media application in the sense can be used for marketing purposes. It depends on your business. It depends on your marketing strategy. But Twitter does have a, a lot of solutions, just like Facebook, just like LinkedIn. They all have various marketing solutions for you as a small business. And Yes, you can definitely, you can absolutely, many, many businesses use Twitter for marketing and um, they do work that into their marketing strategy. Thank you. So we know that, you know, some business has been around for a long time and you go to their website and you don't know if it's always the latest up-to-date information. So how do you develop trust through your website? Yeah, I'll answer that just because um, I'm in the process of creating trust right now. And I always like to share my stories um, just as a reference here. But I believe when you create any new relationship um, and whatever vehicle you use, you've got to be consistent, right? You've got to be consistent with your messaging, consistent with your brand, and consistent with your routines of how often you do post 
particularly in websites. We heard earlier that websites are modifying. You have an opportunity to communicate daily reports, daily updates, and utilize even blogs now. So if you could start setting up, and this is what I do, a reminder on your calendar, maybe it's Friday, 7 a.m., update my website with a news article or highlight an individual, highlight a project or talk about an affiliation I'm associated with. And you go up there and you update that, you're creating a consistency. And then what you're doing is you're also creating engagement. So now you have your viewers or your clients now having an expectation and getting into a routine to see what's going on now. Like in my situation, what's gonna happen with Aviva now? Who are they hiring this week? And is there a job opportunity where there's a fit for me? So that's one way that I really have seen to be very effective in creating that trust with a website. And one more thing I'd like to say, um, just because um, there's a lot of business owners out there that have maybe looked at their website and created it two, three years ago um, when they had an idea and they had their capabilities, but things have changed and you've got to be relevant. And I share that because every day something is happening there's a saying that yesterday's news is old news so be relevant with your website treat it like your best friend right you're not going to talk to your best friend when you have something exciting once a year you're going to talk to them the minute you have something good to share and some news update and treat your website the same it's going to create consistency and it's going to also share relevant information which brings me to my next question. It seems to me like being on social media is like owning a pet. It takes a lot of maintenance, right? You have to walk it, feed it, clean up after it. With everyone being so busy in their business, who has time to add another pet slash social media to their long list of things to do? If I could answer that, um, it does. It takes a little bit of time, but I think it's definitely a way to connect at a very low cost. So when you look at the time and effort you're putting into social media or any type of marketing tool that you may use, it, it, it really gets you at different places. I mean, think about it. So I'm at social media. I create my page. I, you know, I have a little bit of experience doing it. It's definitely worth the time because the amount of people and the amount of engagement you're gonna receive from doing it, it's definitely worth it. And it's not, it's, it's you know, there's easy tools and easy processes to create one. Um, again, it all depends what you're going to be going with, either a LinkedIn page, a Facebook page, or, you know, your, your websites or your Twitter's accounts, but it's definitely worth the time and it's not as bad as, as certain people because I know people get, you know, um, kind of lost on thinking, you know, it's going to take a lot of time, but it's not. And I just have one more thing to add there, something that we've been implemented in our company now. And at first, um, every time we would have um, a hiring or an onboarding, the first thing I would ask when I interview somebody or I look at a candidate is I go to their LinkedIn page, right? Mm -hmm. And if they're not updated with the latest job applications, I get a little concerned because the world we're living in today is real time and you've got to see their background. So after we hire and we go through our onboarding, part of our onboarding that we've embedded is, mm -hmm. are you on LinkedIn? Yes. Okay, great. When was the last time you updated your picture and your profile? Uh, two, three years ago? Okay, we got to do that. So create, it, it doesn't have to be time consuming. If you start creating those habits and you implement simple processes and start training your team to adapt these type of behaviors. And it's very simple to do. Um, we've gone to so much to just a step-by-step -step process, like put your picture, update your latest jobs, and identify some organizations you're associated with. And once a week, put five minutes on your calendar and check out some platform of either your business industry that we're supporting or another business industry and let us know how we can service those. So I think the more that you invest early in training, the better it's going to be so you're not left behind. So I hear you suggesting I change out my high school picture <laughs> on my uh, LinkedIn website. 
Well, if I remember, I, I think I like your profile now. I think we worked on it. <laughs> and I like high school. So <laughs> let's get personal for a minute. My personal email is AOL. I've had it since 1985. I have every email I think I've ever written. What does that say about me when I send someone a personal email that has AOL on it? Hey. You know, it says that you are seasoned. <laughs> However, <laughs> as long as your email is professional, in the professional world, your email should be professional. I have seen in in the last 10 years, I have looked over resumes with some very extremely unprofessional emails. And so the one thing as a business owner, as as a as someone that is recruiting talent, as someone that is applying for jobs or internships, you you want to keep your email professional and that's what you are looking for when you are recruiting or hiring. So I can't tell you the amount of times that I've and team members have laughed at not something that says AOL, but something that says something that is much more unprofessional than that and and people don't realize that some people have kept some email addresses from high school and they continue with those and that's not necessarily the right thing okay so we know that facebook is great for the grandkids and grandma and that fun stuff but is facebook a serious business tool Absolutely. I will say, and I'll share, you know, my, um, from my previous role, I used to be very engaged with community events. I did a lot of um, different events for uh, municipalities that I managed. And a lot of the times I wasn't able to be, you know, uh, inform some of the council members that I used to work with. So I use Facebook as my um, targeting tool in my social media post and they saw how active I was. And so, yes, definitely, I think it's definitely a low budget marketing tool for businesses. Um, I think this is definitely the way to go. I believe every small business should be on Facebook um, in a number of ways so you could promote it. And it increases your customer support, the engagement, and again, I think I mentioned it, it's multifaceted um, in regards to different ways you can market um, and you could target your 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 audience i mean think about that you know there is a low cost on doing ads on facebook that you could target certain zip codes so for me i think facebook is a way to go about it it's it's definitely the the platform that has the most followers and you and again definitely go on facebook.com business newsletters and it could give you so much information to help your businesses and increase your sales if that's what you're looking for or brand or trust i know we talked about branding you could do it through facebook and you could definitely and believe me bruce a lot more you know of our age or you know the older folks there is just my kids use it and they're young adults definitely great so if i'm on facebook and i want to make america great again should I share that with all my business contacts and let them know how enthusiastic I am about that? Well, this is when you have your professional and your business Facebook. So you could, depending if you're a solopreneur and how you want to engage it. So personally, I have my personal Facebook that I'm very engaged with. But I also um, work with our social media teams regarding my businesses. So a lot of the times you got to determine what you really want to relay and who you want to target. Um, I have a lot of my clients that are now my friends on Facebook. And so they get to build a, that special relationship with me. They know I like to hike. So we get to build that relationship. So many of your clients that you want to build that relationship, you could do it through Facebook. They get to see what your hobbies are. Then again, you have your business profile page. That's de definitely different. You wouldn't necessarily share your, your personal views on, on the page. So you could manage both. Okay, so you're saying my business uh, social media should be strictly business and very professional. And my personal ideas, suggestions, and philosophies I put on my personal. Could someone get access to my personal side of my social media? 
So if I had a business Facebook and a personal Facebook, could my business relationships also access my personal Facebook page? They can. Or social media? And this is, so you manage it, right? So let's say, for example, you're a small business and you have the administration rights for your business page and then you also have your personal because you need your personal profile to set up a business page. So you can, obviously, you know, you could tag yourself they could, um, they'll see that you represent the company in many different ways. Um, so you can use it. Again, you could keep them separate, but at the same time, you know, I know you mentioned about business. You know, you want to engage, you know, your content, sometimes it's personal. You know, you're doing stories, share stories, keep it engaging. Um, but yes, I mean, you could definitely keep them separate, but at the same time, you could kind of you could share the content right so that's what i do when my company we do something great as on a personal i want to showcase the the company i work for so i share a lot of the posts because that's another great thing about facebook you could share the content and you could share live videos so erica earlier you talked about branding with your website so if i wanted to start or create a company website today do i really need to go sit down and talk to a branding specialist and get my branding uh, philosophy together. How do I start to put together my website and do it quickly? Yeah, and I think that's a really important question right now because, like I was saying earlier, if you haven't revisited your website in the last two to three years, stop right now and let's talk <laughs> because the platforms have changed. Even so as displaying your services, um, now they have the functions and the functionality on websites where you can like your services, just like you like pictures on Facebook and in Instagram, now you have the option to go like a company's website. So to answer your question, how do I get started and where do I go? I know I maybe have a website that's been outdated or I'm a new business and I want to create something, how do I get started? Uh, the first thing you really need to think about is the website is a lot of times the first stop for people. They're going to look at it first. It's going to be the depth of your company. It's not only going to share your services and your brand, but it's also going to share the people and your message and what you're about. So what you want to do is spend a little time and think through of what you want that takeaway to be. For me, I want when people go to my website to be able to connect very quickly and understand why I created the business I did. I want them to be able to understand our offerings, our capabilities, and I also want them to see the team and what we're developing. And very quickly, what's my contact information? So you sit down and if you can identify a couple of things like that, that's a good start. Now, how do you connect that to the website? There's a lot of services out there that offer monthly, very inexpensive monthly fees where there's already design templates available. You just pick the color schemes, you upload your logo and it's ready to go. And you can modify it as quickly or as not as quickly as you want it. What I just want to say for any businesses out there or people that are thinking about revamping their website is to really think about your message and think about that brand because once you put it out there, that is going to be the first impression. And what I have noticed and I believe that's very critical is while you might have some of the best offerings or probably have the, the best capabilities on scalability, you really want people to connect with your service and what you're about. So I always say when you're putting together a website, when you're putting together your, your story, be authentic. Um, and your website is no different. You want to share your mission, you want to share your values, and you want to tell them what you're about. So being consistent in that, you can use tons of platforms at very inexpensive and modify it along the way. Great. What's the real purpose of LinkedIn other than getting 500 followers? Um, <laughs> it's not so much about the followers, but it is like I mentioned before, it is 
contacts. It, it, you know, the more getting those connections and connecting with people, especially now, um, think of it as a, a global networking party. You are connecting with people and that's the purpose. These building these professional relationships um, Facebook and there's so many other so many other I guess social media platforms can be used for both personal and and um, and professional. LinkedIn is definitely more on the professional side but LinkedIn allows you to build business relationships. It also allows you I mean you don't have to you could be in school looking for an internship you can be looking for a job you can be um on an in an hr department looking to recruit talent so linkedin is the place to do it this is where you're going to find people this is where you're going to see people's this is people's resumes this is people's um highlights of their qualifications this is where people are supposed to brag about what they're doing and all of their accomplishments and, and that's a, it's a great place to do it and that's the purpose of LinkedIn to building those so relationships. Bruce, mm -hmm. Bruce if I could add to that um, I started with uh, Morello Enterprises about a year ago and so after leaving an industry over 25 years the waste industry I needed to connect and I have to say LinkedIn for me was key I was able to connect to um, clients to some of the, the companies um, and you know it's also great to to connect with your competitors right to see what they're doing but I have to say that LinkedIn for me has been probably one of the greatest tools that I've used for 2019 and 2020 and I will continue to use and I know you mentioned about you know your business cards guess what I do I meet someone look up their name and I follow them on LinkedIn I think it's a great tool definitely but if I'm on LinkedIn and I only have two followers, do I look like a loser? <laughs> no, absolutely not. And and there's easy ways. Um, you have these contacts in your emails. So LinkedIn has ways of importing and sending invitations to all these people that you know, because let's be honest, you just don't know only two people. You do know more than two people that you've met throughout your professional career. And these are all people that you can get to know. Also, your personal relationships, those are people that can be on your LinkedIn because they are professionals and they could allow you to connect with other professionals that they know. So this is, you will grow your network, whether it's um, how you're gonna be inviting them through via email or you can connect them through LinkedIn offers a people you may know page. So you will know people through your people and you can connect with those people. So if I haven't updated my company website in a few years, what's the best way to do that? Shall I scrap it and redesign it? Do I update it? What's the best way to update my company website? Well, what I always say is don't stop something that you have right now because you probably still have contacts that are looking at your website. But you can work at the same time of developing a new website um, while that current one is being utilized. And that's the approach we took. Um, what we really did was we kept a website there because leads were still coming in and we still have our business cards and there's contact on there. Um, but what we also did is we started from scratch really. Um, we sat down and we thought backwards. I always like look, think about Covey and what's the end in mind? What's the ultimate approach that you want to leave behind? What's your message? And the other thing we did is we took a look at other people's websites and it's okay to do that. <laughs> there was a lot of websites that I go, that is a phenomenal website. I really like that contrast, the black and white, and oh, I like the, the highlights of the individuals. And I sat down there and we wrote a list of everything we liked from each website. And then we wrote a list of things that we didn't like yet. And once we had compiled a list of the good stuff, we started working on that. Now, it can work pretty quickly, to, like if you use some templates, or you can take a little more time and hire somebody to do it for you. There's no wrong way or approach to take. Um, the most important thing is to be consistent with your website and to make sure that it's 
being utilized in the right way. Um, the other thing I, I, I like to say here is um, if you have a website, and I noticed this, speaking of our client, you might have a vision and say, this is what I want, but you also need to think about your client and what their values are and what they're looking for. And sometimes you might have to reassess and mirror those same values. For example, we're talking here with San Diego Gas and Electric. What are your core values? We know it's safety. We know it's reliability. We know it's customer service. If you don't have that in your core values, you might not be aligning well with your client. So that's an opportunity to think about, let me spend a little more time with my team and create values that align with our clients and make sure that our website shows those as well. Thank you. Russell is uh, joining us today and Russell wants to know, can you share suggestions on how to improve your LinkedIn profile? Absolutely. Um, I mean, there's a number of ways that you can improve your LinkedIn profile. Um, it starts with you have to have a professional photo. LinkedIn is a professional network, so you should have a professional photo for your LinkedIn. And um, I there's there's very inexpensive ways of creating a professional photo and you can have your spouse, partner, friend take one of you. It, it does not have to be a super costly thing to do. And um, a headline, you wanna create a headline and you wanna create a summary. So when you're creating your profile, your headline will actually be, if, you, if you're not gonna create one, if you're not gonna write one yourself, a catchy headline, they will use your most recent job experience and that's okay. Um, I would probably say over 50% of people around the world have a headline that is just their most recent um, or current um, role or position. Um, but if you would like it to be something else like social media expert or some sort of a tagline about you, a one sentence tagline, and your summary is basically, think of your summary as your bio what you do in or what you do and what you've done in three sentences and um, you want to make sure that you've got relevant work and education uh, your relevant work experience is up to date and your education is up to date and um, all of your skills linkedin has the ability to post to put to add all of your relevant skills for your current industry and you can update those on a regular basis say you may be looking for a particular position um, that is different completely different than than what you have as your previous work experience you can add various skills to your linkedin profile and the other thing is you can request endorsements of your skills you can have your coworkers, your friends endorse you for those skills um, say you have put um, e-commerce knowledge, um, utilities knowledge. You can have your friends and coworkers endorse you for those skills, as well as you can have your friends and coworkers write recommendations and reviews of you. Thank you. So Cindy, is, Cindy has joined us today and she writes, she has a small 15 employee company and they have an outside company hire to update their website. They look it over and update each month. And when there's new information, uh, they have this company added to their website. Is that a good idea? And who would you suggest to, uh, to help you with your social media? Right, I think that's a great idea. Whatever works for you, keep doing it because it's working and you're being connected to technology. Um, you gotta start somewhere. And sometimes there is that investment. If you feel, I, I would, don't know where to start, it's overwhelming, and you wanna hire a consultant or an outside person, good for you. You're spending your money back into your business and your brand. And your brand, like, like we've all seen, is what you have. So I think that's an okay option as well. What I also like to do, and I share with people too, is um, it doesn't have to be as much as an investment as you think too. Maybe you have a sibling out there <laughs> that's a little more creative with social media. I mean, I leverage my brother <laughs> and I pay him a little bit just to kind of 
he knows the tools, he knows the lingo, and he kind of shows me some things, and now I'm using it. You just got to get started. Once you get going and you put those reminders, you'll learn as you go along the way. I know even for today's call, we were doing a couple of updates and looking at material, and we're like, wow, we thought we had a good platform and information. And between us, we kept sharing these tips and tools. And I think um, what we're living in now, especially going through COVID, it's gonna continually advance. There's gonna be additional platforms, additional applications. And I just say, don't be afraid. It's technology, just like the phones are advancing, um, the vehicles are communicating, there's outlets as well. So whatever works for you that you're comfortable, keep doing it and be open to asking around as well and seeing what's working for other people. Great, here's another question from one of our listeners today. How do you deal with negative reviews on social media? I can um, tell you that from many, many forms of experience with very many different companies, small startups to larger startups, the, um, the most important thing is that the person writing the review, regardless of who they are and what the experience that they've had, you need to show that your commenting is always positive and that you understand their experience and that you are sorry that they've had such a negative experience and if for any more additional questions that they should email your support team or your info at whatever your customer service email is or your information email is you should always respond in a positive positive way because how you respond reflects on your your whole company and you have to keep the reviews and the comments to those the comments to those reviews very very positive mm. great 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 suggestion we've covered a lot of ground today and we're almost out of time but what i want to do before we run out of time and then we'll take a couple more questions is how each one of you give us uh some takeaways from today so on the three subjects we talked about, what, what are some of the takeaways that we can leave with our listeners? Oh, I could start with that. How are you? Um, yes, so first of all, I think number one, obviously we have to um, stay active. So having a social media platform and with no activity, it's really having nothing at all, right? So the first thing you wanna say is if you're a business and you are promoting on Facebook or LinkedIn, definitely be active. You know, definitely um, continue with um, the activity. It'll show that you're serious about your business and you wanna share your information. Um, the second one is your content. You know, make sure you're relevant. Uh, make sure your content is engaging, uh, pertaining to your business industry. I think this is one of the, the things that obviously all three of us, um, we spoke about, but I think content and it's, is very important. So please take the time. And again, you can share stories depending what social media uh, platform you're using, but share them, you know, stay engaged. So your content. The third one, I know we, we discussed it. I think keep your cover and your profile page active. So a lot of the times, let's say on Facebook, um, your hours are, have changed. Make sure that you stay on top of that. Your websites, make sure they're linked and they're done properly. Um, so make sure that you know you, you continue to be um, updating your, your profile and um, and all of your information, whether it's on LinkedIn, Facebook, or your website, your phone numbers are accurate, your emails are accurate, your contact, and obviously your personnel, staff changes. So definitely stay on top of it. And you know, those are the three takeaways that are definitely something that, that are important. Thank you. I, um, some takeaways for LinkedIn, um, similar, in a sense, very similar to Facebook, but keep your profile and your company page always updated. And with your own profile, it's important to boast about your accomplishments. LinkedIn is not the place where you want to be humble. You want to brag. You want to brag. And the second, I would say connect, connect, connect. You want to connect with other industry leaders. You want to connect with people. The, it, it's not so much the more people you know, but it is in a sense. The more people you know, the more people you will know. And 
in that sense, you will be able to potentially grow your business and meet new people that share the same interests and be active. And again, also, as Elizabeth said, be active and share relevant content. That does not necessarily mean you have to create your own content. You don't have to. You don't have to be a writer to be posting, but you can be keeping up to date with news in your industry and sharing that. You are resharing and putting your own spin and opinion on it. Um, that's basically you sharing your ideas if you are not able to create your own posts and blog articles. And I'll close it up with um, with your website, right? I, I, I thought about this and I'm like, gosh, what are the three takeaways that were very valuable for me when we rebranded our website? And the first thing that I treat my website is invest in your website like it's an employee. You have an employee, you're gonna invest with the best onboarding, the best training, the best tools, right? Treat your website no different. Just like there's updates that you probably have in safety, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your website displays those updates as well, right? Like I said, how many of you go down, you open your website, you look at your copyright, and it was back to the day that you incorporated the website in 2018. Times have changed. Make sure your website copyright is of 2020 today. That's one simple tool. The next thing I would say is does your website accurately deliver your company's brand. And that's really critical to keeping a consistent messaging through your website, through your social media platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook. It's okay that they might be a little different how you communicate it, but you want consistency with your brand and your values. So be consistent with what you're about. Do you have a tagline? And what does that tagline mean, right? So earlier today, Bruce introduced me with Aviv and our tagline, Impact Now. That's our tagline and it's something that we've developed to help military veterans and transitioning veterans into the workforce. Think about things like that you can do and communicate through your website. And the last thing I, I really feel like is important that, that we took advantage of is make sure your website aligns with your customer or client's needs. While it's so great to be here thinking this is what my brand is and what I want, does it also connect with your customer? Are you in the same industry or does your brand show that you're just completely not connected with that industry? Those are the three things that I feel like I'd like to share and leave behind. Wow, that, that is amazing. And, and thank you all for that. My takeaway is, is that social media is not an option. We're all on social media. We're doing it right now. And with COVID-19, not to use an overuse phrase, it's the new normal, right? We're doing more and more of it. So the question is not if you're on social media, is how well are you doing social media? So if you're gonna do it, why not do it well? And for that, we thank each one of you today of our panelists, um, Nicole, Elizabeth, Erica, you were absolutely phenomenal. We thank all of you for joining us today. We ask that you do fill out the survey and return it to us so we get your feedback on how to make these webinars better for you. And with that, we'll turn it back to uh, Sydney Furbush for closing remarks. But thank you all again, my panelists, you were excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow, Bruce, that, that was um, excellent information that, that you provided um, along with your panel uh, for helping our customers retain retain their customer base and also all the tips to help them expand their market. So um, great, great panel, great information. You know, as I kind of think about some of the things that I have out there as far as my Facebook, my LinkedIn, um, very similar to you, Bruce. I think I have my high school picture out there. I need to update it. I need to make some tweaks to it. But um, great tips that um, I think all our companies can take advantage of. Um, thanks again, Erica, Elizabeth, and Nicole for, for really helping our companies learn more about some of the social media tools that are out there and all those techniques and, and um, advices that you guys have provided. Um, hopefully, um, all of our folks on the audience, they, they picked up at least one tidbit or one nugget of information 
that that can help uh, grow the business and expand on the services. So um, to, to close, you know, I, I like to um, um, first thank uh, my team, um, Linda, Sherry, and, and Bruce for, for definitely uh, making sure that you know, this event was successful. Um, also want to, um, you know, just make sure everyone knows that these are a series of webinars that we've been hosting. Um, this new series that we have is really to help companies learn how to go beyond the pandemic and, and thrive. Um, we do have a new series, that, a new topic coming up next week on June the 19th, uh, and it's still part of the thriving series. Um, is work-life balance. The most important client is you. Um, and some of the discussion items is going to be the importance of preparation, building effective routines, and the benefits of proper nutrition and physical health, and that's something that we all need. Um, I want to make sure that um, as you guys um, kind of continue on and connecting with sdg &E, that uh, you give us your feedback. You know, as Bruce had mentioned, your feedback helps us uh, ensure that we're staying relevant. It also helps us think about the next topics that uh, are important to you. Uh, so mark your calendars for June the 19th. I'm looking forward to joining you next week at our next webinar. And uh, stay safe and, um, and continue to learn about how you can make advancements uh, within your your various social media tools and um, enjoy the day. Thank you. Thank, well, thank you. you all for attending. Thank you, Sydney. Thank you. Be safe, everyone.